do you really think that you could kick Vince McMahon's ass, Eric? I didn't care whether I could or not, frankly. Um, <laughs> I, I wasn't intimidated by him um, because I didn't know him. Now, had I known Vince then the way I do now, I, maybe I'd approach things a little differently because he is kind of a crazy bastard. Um, but at the time, he, to me, he was just a big, jacked up, muscled up bench, you know, gym guy. And not, not to sound like the tough guy, because that shit's way behind me, but I, you know, I bounced in a bar in Chicago, I, downtown. I, I, I fought guys bigger and stronger than me a, a lot in my life. I've you also bounced problems. in a bar in Tulsa, Oklahoma, by the way. No, I got bounced in a bar. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was the bouncy, not the bouncer. There's a difference. <laughs> but no, I wasn't I wasn't afraid of Vince at all. I wasn't intimidated by him. And, and 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 mostly because my thinking was, look, if he shows up, whether he kicks my ass or it goes the other way, I don't really care because it's a win -win. huge. It's gonna be huge. <laughs> And for those There's listening, it was the uh, controversy creates cash, and you created uh, more controversy by by issuing that challenge. I think than anybody in years and years of the wrestling business did. So it it, it, it served a point, and I think it was it was well taken because uh, honestly, uh, Bruce and I had to talk Vince out of going. Out of oh, going. I don't. Uh, he wasn't ever going to show. That was all work. He was working you too. He was never going to come. He, he was he afraid to show boy. up. Yeah. It's all talk. He's he afraid he's going to get his ass kicked, Eric. He read all those press clippings. You know? so, so wait a minute. Wait a minute, Jerry. We're, we're talking about the 1998 Slamboree. I think, is, isn't that right, Eric? It was the pay-per-view that you, you yeah. invited Vince to come and, and fight you in the ring. And yeah. you had him uh, counted out. So you actually won the match. Well, I had no choice. He didn't show up. <laughs> so Jerry, you had a dressing room for him and everything there too. Right? I had a dressing room for him. I, you know, name I plate. Know yeah, I, no, name plate on the door. I instructed Doug Dillinger, a head of security, and everybody else on the security team. If they show up, escort them to the room like any other celebrity. Provide them with every courtesy that we would anybody else that was a celebrity. Take care of them and. You know, the only other direction I gave was the big show because, you know, there were some people that were actually thought that Vince might show up and big show came up to me and he goes, oh, Hey boss. Uh, well, what happens if he shows up, I said, if he shows up, shows up, we'll figure it out. He goes, well, what happens if, you know, it doesn't go your way. I said, you know, he, he was like, you, 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 you want to give me the Iggy and have me come in. I said, Paul, no. You know, now, unless it looks like there's imminent death involved and I'm on the receiving end of it, you know, use your judgment. But other than that, no, just let it go. And so, and, was, so was Jerry, what's the skinny here? Well, you talked to Vince. What was the, what's the skinny here on Vince's side? Oh, he was pissed off as hell. I mean, I, I was right there, right there when it happened. Now, you got his attention, Eric. I mean, uh, you know, Vince didn't watch the show, of course, but he had, you know, the Howard Finkel there. We used to, we used to, get these on on tuesday mornings we used to get the detailed packs of packets of paper i mean uh, it was just thick like this i mean uh, and, and it had segment by segment move by move the howard finkel say would stay up all night long deciphering his notes and making notes and printing everybody out so the next day we knew exactly the time we knew exactly who went to the bathroom one day i mean everything that was on that show we knew thanks to Howard Fink, but Vent, Vent, when when they brought that script in and uh, and said Eric Bischoff challenged challenged you, like, of course it spread across production meeting like wildfire. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You guys going to go down there? And uh, and you know Vent Vent was hot. I mean he was hot about it. It, it was embarrassing to him. He, he felt it was embarrassing to him and. Uh, but uh, you know, if there was no way, like you said, he was he was going to go down there because everybody, what what good you going to do? You go down there and you say you do kick his ass, you get lucky and you kick Eric's ass. But he is a black belt karate guy, uh, by the way, Vince. And uh, you you got <laughs> I bet you that scared him to death in too. In a high school wrestling match. That was Vince's claim to fame, getting beat by a blind guy in a high school wrestling match. By the way, 
Ooh, I didn't know. I wish I would have known that when I was cutting those promos. On this. <laughs> <laughs> so Jerry he tells a great story about that. Well, I have him on one time, John, have him tell that story about getting beat by a uh, black guy in high school. But, uh, but uh, there was no way. And plus, we were just, we weren't going to let him go. And, uh, and uh, you know, we had a show to do, too. So, <laughs> but uh, Jerry, you, got you, ever, attention. you got everybody's attention. And uh, it just goes back to, Eric being Eric and creating something that's talking to people are talking about your company and, and, and you were kicking our ass for 82 weeks, 83 weeks, whatever it was. Jerry, did, did Vince ever say that he was going to go? No, no, no. I mean, he wanted to go and he always hinted like he wanted to go and was going to go, but uh, there was nobody who was going to let him go. No, no, nobody going to let him get, get, get near that place. It was I'm worse. Just, I'm, just, I'm just curious, Gerald. How could anybody have stopped him if Vince truly wanted to go? Who would, who well, you, could, be? you couldn't have, but we could have put up a hell of a roadblock for him and you know, made it difficult for him to get there. And we would have. I mean, I mean, uh, you were, I mean, you, you being WCW, you guys were kicking our ass anyway. And, you know, we're, 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 we're uh, as you know, the, the, the hours that you got to put in when you work next to that guy is just, insanely ungodly you know i mean i don't know how that man puts in all those hours that he puts in but he he could he could have gone if he really wanted to but i tell you we stuck by him and then and we we wasn't gonna let him anywhere near that but you know we, we right like you say if vince said i'm going and you're not stopping me we we wouldn't have been able to stop him and didn't didn't wasn't Stephanie graduating from college that same weekend as well? I believe it was it was it was that was that, that that in that time frame. I thought I thought it was Shane, but it, looking back, it's probably Stephanie. But uh, and that was in Boston. But that Wooster isn't too far from Boston. <laughs> I'm just trying, thought, I'm just trying to be kind. He could make it. I was just trying to be kind and give give him an excuse. <laughs> that's all right. And you really gave made it convenient for him. You made it sixty miles away from where he was going to be. I mean, come on, he better, better <laughs> declined the challenge. What a dick I was! Oh well. 